My painting titled Cross Country, an original pastel on sanded paper, won the first place award at Canada's 2001 Aviation Art Competition in Ottawa. This painting of a de Havilland tiger moth depicts an RAF student pilot on a cross-country training flight near Vancouver, British Columbia. The tiger moth was a basic trainer with the British Commonwealth's air training plan during World War II, whereby aircrew from all over Britain trained in Canada with the RAF, the Royal Air Force. In 1940, there were 120 tiger moths based at Boundary Bay near Vancouver, BC. The original pastel painting is currently in the Canadian Aviation Museum's permanent art collection in Ottawa. A Glorious Belenka, a pastel painting on sanded paper. Oh my, what could have been. Giuseppe Mario Belenka was an Italian-American airplane designer and builder who in 1922 created the first enclosed cabin monoplane in the United States. Giuseppe's Missed Opportunity with Charles Lindbergh. In late 1926, an enterprising Charles Lindbergh had convinced his St. Louis sponsors to back him on an attempt to win the Ortigue Prize for a nonstop New York to Paris transatlantic flight. The Ortigue Prize was a $25,000 reward and offered in May of 1919 by the French-American hotel owner Raymond Ortigue, himself an aviation enthusiast and philanthropist. The prize was to be awarded to the first Allied aviators to fly nonstop from New York City to Paris or vice versa. Lindbergh specifically wanted a single pilot, single engine aircraft in order to reduce weight and also lessen the chances of failure. He thought the ideal aircraft was the Wright Belenka, known then as the WB-2. Inspired, Lindbergh, dressed in his new suit, hoping to look professional, set out by train to New York for the face-to-face -face meeting with the Columbia Aircraft Company. He hoped to buy the only WB-2 available. Through a series of lengthy negotiations for the aircraft, at a price of $15,000 and who the pilot should be, other than Lindbergh, the deal fell through. Not long after, the Ryan Aircraft Company won the contract for $6,000. The rest is history. The Ryan monoplane, instead of the WB-2, then became the Spirit of St. Louis, flying from New York to Paris in May of 1927. The WB-2 went on to a long and fruitful flying career, starting with establishing a new world's non-refueled endurance record of over 51 hours. Oh my, what could have been. These words from Charles Lindbergh, I think appropriate to close this segment on the glorious Belenka. And I quote, Science, freedom, beauty, adventure, what more could you ask of life? Aviation combined all of the elements I loved. There was science in each curb of an airfoil. There was freedom in the unlimited horizons. A pilot was surrounded by the beauty of earth and sky. Adventure lay in each puff of wind. So said Charles Lindbergh. My painting, A Glorious Belenka shown here, won Best of Show at the 2002 Horizons of Flight Aviation Art Exhibition. It's a pastel on sanded paper. This painting was inspired by the story of what might have been. Lindbergh's The Spirit of St. Louis could have been a Wright Belenka instead of the Ryan monoplane, now hanging in the hallowed halls of our own Aviation and Space Museum in our nation's capital.
Aerodrome Number no. 5, an original oil painting on board. Samuel Langley's aerodromes were pioneering but unsuccessful manned powered flying machines. Notably, a few small models were mildly successful. His assistant, Charles Manley, attempted to pilot a full scale aerodrome on October 7 and December 8 in 1903. On both attempts, floating catapults launched the craft, but the aerodrome failed to fly, crashing into the Potomac River seconds after launch. Rescuers pulled the pilot unhurt from the water each time. Only nine days after Langley's failures, flying history was made. Two brothers from Dayton, Ohio, conducted four successful flights at near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, in their right flyer. Their names were Orville and Wilbur. My painting, O oh Jenny Jenny, won the Florence S. Brissant Award at the National Arts Club in New York in 1998, a pastels only show sponsored by the Pastel Society of America. This painting is a reflection of opposites. The singular flying machine seen here pitted against the power of Mother Nature. The aircraft, a Curtis Jenny, a frail machine by today's standards, is shown escaping the near shadow of a late afternoon thundershower. A truly dangerous place to be in a ship such as this. If the words were known of this early pioneering airmail pilot, he might be heard praying, Oh, please, Jenny, dear old Jenny, get us home safely just one more time. My painting here, I titled Amelia's Mystery, an original oil painting on paper. Amelia Earhart's disappearance has been an ongoing mystery throughout my lifetime. My depiction here, from the imagined perspective of a young girl lost in her private fantasy of flying one day, perhaps represents the origin of her dream and her destiny. In the fashion of a long-limbed bird, Agile and quiet, Amelia's story echoes the image of that graceful bird, which provokes the question, Amelia, where are you?